In this study, we have two uh, aspects of it. We have a pre-winning aspect that is more a proof of concept, if you will, uh, trying to raise as much as possible the uh, levels of vitamin D uh, at winning. And then we have this post-winning uh, phase where it's more a, a practical application, actually. And for this study, the idea behind it is always related to our topics here, the, uh, the replacement on the use of antibiotics and of a zinc oxide that, will, uh, that may come into effect uh, in the near future, at least here in Canada. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Daniel Bueno Dalto, a research scientist at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. So Daniel, I know you were on the show about a year back or so. So before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself as a reminder? Well, yeah. So uh, thank you uh, for the invitation, Clay. And uh, well, as you said, uh, my name is Daniel. I work at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. I'm the lead researcher uh, at the uh, Swine Nutrition Lab. Uh, and my focus here is on uh, the study of vitamins and trace elements in, in pig's nutrition. Yeah. Gotcha. So I saw that you published one of those studies recently, kind of looking at vitamin D supplementation in pigs pre and post weaning, and then looking at different ways to increase vitamin D metabolism. So could you tell us a little bit about what that study was and what all your team did? Yeah, sure. So uh, in this study, we have two uh, aspects of it. We have a pre-winning aspect that is more a uh, proof of concept, if you will, uh, trying to raise as much as possible the uh, levels of vitamin D uh, at winning. And then we have this post-winning uh, phase where it's more a, a practical application, actually. And for this study, the idea behind it is always related to our topics here, the, uh, uh, the replacement on the use of antibiotics and of a zinc oxide that, will, uh, that may come into effect uh, in the near future, at least here in Canada. Uh, so with, the, the, uh, with uh, all these issues that we know very well uh, that happens in the post winning period, the intestinal disturbances, antioxidant imbalances, energy deficiency, deficiency etc., uh, we thought that uh, by using vitamins, in this specific case here, vitamin D, uh, we could uh, avoid or at least mitigate some of these uh, issues. Because vitamin D, uh, besides those very well-known effects on calcium, phosphorus, metab phosphorus uh, metabolism, etc., uh, we know uh, vitamin D has some uh, interesting uh, effects on the uh, antioxidant system and also in the immune system. So uh, we decided to try uh, using uh, vitamin D uh, on these animals. However, we know that uh, the levels of vitamin D in the plasma of piglets at winning, they are very low. Uh, so the idea was to uh, try to increase as much as possible this uh, value, these levels uh, at winning, uh, trying to uh, uh, evaluate if uh, we were able to have uh, more healthy piglets in the post-winning period. So uh, for this trial here, uh, what we did uh, during the uh, pre-winning period, so we started off at two days of eight. So uh, at day two, eight and 21, these piglets uh, were supplemented uh, with uh, a solution, a neural solution of 25 hydroxycholicosiferol. And between day uh, 14 and 21, so during one week, uh, we exposed these animals to uh, UVB light uh, for 15 minutes every second day. And we had a control diet that was uh, just animals receiving uh, saline at day 2, 8, and 21. Uh, after weaning, those animals in the control group, they were fed 2,000 international in, uh, units of uh, colicalciferol, so uh, vitamin D3, uh, and the animals that were exposed to uh, UVB light and also the uh, oral solution of 25-hydroxy colicalciferol, they were fed 2,000 international units of 25-hydroxy uh, colicalciferol. And we evaluated uh, body weight, serum levels of, of vitamin D, and also the uh, gene expression of some uh, genes related to vitamin D, uh, antioxidant system, and also the immune system. So uh, what we were, were able to see with these results is that, well, this pre-weaning supplementation uh, that we uh, tried, uh, well, 
it was very effective in increasing vitamin D uh, status of the animals. So these animals had almost three times more uh, circulating levels of vitamin D compared to the uh, control group. And uh, the use of 25-hydroxy colicalciferol in the post-winning period was also uh, more efficient than uh, the uh, regular uh, colicalciferol. So these levels were uh, uh, kept uh, at greater, uh, increased or uh, even greater uh, at day uh, 28 and 35, for example, compared to the uh, control group. However, uh, as we used 2,000 international units in both uh, post-winning diets, uh, even in the control diet, we observed an increase in the serum levels of, of the vitamin, uh, meaning that uh, even if this source of vitamin D it may be not so uh, bioavailable or bioefficient as the 25-hydroxy, well, even there at 2,000 international units, it seems uh, to be enough to fulfill the animal's requirements uh, for this vitamin. And uh, this is the basis of uh, all the, uh, the explanation for all other results, because basically we didn't see much differences uh, for all the other parameters that we were uh, looking for in this study. Most probably because we fed them enough vitamin D uh, for both sources. So the first conclusion that we got here is that uh, independently of the source of vitamin D that you use for your piglets in the post winning period, if you supplement 2,000 international units, it's going to be okay. Your piglets will have uh, an adequate uh, uh, vitamin D status. However, if we feed them with 25-hydroxychloroquine, uh, well, the body uh, levels or the, body, uh, the, the, the metabolic status in vitamin D will be higher, even though the other one was okay. With 25, it's going to be higher. And we have some extra effects in terms, uh, uh, more specifically in terms of uh, antioxidant system. So when we fed these animals with the 25-hydroxychloroquine, we had some uh, genes that were, uh, the expression of these genes were lower uh, and uh, these genes were related to uh, the induction of cell death, for example, or uh, the protection against uh, lipid peroxidation and oxidative damage to proteins. So all of these genes together, of course, if we see uh, each one specifically, uh, we cannot take much conclusion, conclusions about it, but taking all of them together, it gives us this, uh, this uh, suggestion at least that the antioxidant system of these animals were less, uh, 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 less uh, activated, if you will. So uh, these animals uh, needed less antioxidants. However, we also uh, saw some interesting uh, time effects in this study uh, that comes to uh, support those uh, initial uh, conclusions that we got that uh, by using 2,000 uh, international units of 25-hydroxychloroquine um, or colicalciferol, uh, the, the regular form, uh, was enough uh, to, to, to fulfill the requirements of the animals because uh, when we uh, take a look at the time effect, so taking, uh, bringing, emerging these two treatments together and only uh, looking at the differences between uh, winning and the other days that we evaluated, so day uh, 28 and 35, for example, uh, we can see that the antioxidant system of these animals, we evaluated more than 10 genes related to the antioxidant system, and eight of them, uh, eight out of uh, 11 that we evaluated, eight of them were downregulated. So the antioxidant system was not, uh, was not activated in these animals. Uh, for the immune system and also uh, genes related to inflammation, we evaluated 21 genes, and 14 of them were downregulated in the intestinal tissue. So uh, it, it shows us that, uh, well, these animals, they were not challenged uh, in terms of uh, inflammation, intestinal inflammation that is really common in the post waning piglets. So in previous studies in, here in our lab, uh, using the same approach uh, of uh, gene expression, uh, most of the genes were highly activated uh, at day 28 and even 35. So uh, after winning, they were really activated. But here in this uh, study using vitamin D, well, they are not. So it shows once again that uh, high levels of vitamin D are very effective 
in decreasing this uh, immune uh, stimulation, this inflammation at the intestinal level. And as a consequence, uh, we have a lower uh, requirement for uh, antioxidants, if you will. Gotcha. So you talked a little bit earlier about the importance of using UVB light exposure. So could you kind of elaborate on that a little bit more and kind of say why why is this UVB so important during that suckling period? Yeah, so for the UVB light, it's based on previous projects that we ran here. Uh, and now we know that piglets, they are very uh, efficient in converting uh, UVB light into vitamin D. Uh, so the idea here, as I said at the beginning, uh, this first part, the pre-weaning uh, part, was more a proof of concept. So uh, by exposing these animals uh, to UVB light, uh, we knew that, that we would uh, increase, enhance very much their vitamin D levels uh, at weaning. So that was uh, basically the basis. And with this project here, uh, we don't have uh, very um, confirmatory results, but... Uh, we have some suggestions that uh, by exposing these animals to UVB light, we may uh, change how vitamin D homeostasis happens. Uh, we know that uh, vitamin D uh, synthesized from uh, light, if you will, uh, has a different metabolism as vitamin D ingested by feed. And with this project here, it seems that uh, that's what we are seeing here. Uh, these animals have a much longer, uh, um, how can I say that? The, the, the levels of vitamin D uh, remains high for a, a longer time when they are exposed to UVB light. Fortiva is moving beyond feed additives to create foundational ingredients that work with your pig's physiology to support resilience and health. With proven technologies like Ambitine, Flow Matrix, and Endura, Fortiva helps you address the toughest challenges in swine production. From gut health to growth performance, together we can make animals more resilient in the face of future challenges. Learn how at FortivaImpact.com. Gotcha. So final question I have for you is when looking at those two different vitamin D sources and considering the fact that the results showed no difference between the sources for serum vitamin D concentrations, could we say that both sources have similar effect on post-weaning piglets or are there some differences? The, the question is uh, maybe both, because uh, if we take a look at the vitamin D status of the animal, uh, both would be uh, okay. So we can feed 2,000 international units of both, and they're, they're going to do great. However, uh, when we feed 25-hydroxycolcalciferol, we have some extra effects then that may be beneficial to animals. So the levels of uh, circulating levels of, uh, 20, of uh, vitamin D will be a little higher. Uh, when we feed 25-hydroxy, uh, but also we get these uh, interesting in, uh, antioxidant effects and maybe even, may even uh, sorry, maybe uh, we can even have some immune, uh, immune responses as well. We didn't get in this study here, but it's important to say these animals were healthy. So we, they, they were not challenged uh, with bacteria or whatever. So maybe in a more challenging situation, we can get these uh, immune effects of vitamin D that are already proven in other species, even in pigs. Uh, we know that vitamin D can have these uh, interesting effects as well. Awesome. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Daniel, for coming on the show and sharing all your research results with us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.